Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana and today I'm talking about my favourite fictional aircraft. This limits things to those that only operate in atmosphere, mostly, so there's not going to be any cool dropships or Valkyrie shuttles or such. If you want me to talk about those in a future video though, then let me know in the comments. Also, there's a bit of a theme that runs through pretty much everything I'm going to talk about, so see if you can spot what it is. First off, in 10th place, we start with the Project Whisper helicopters from Wolfenstein The New Order. As the name implies, these are experimental stealth craft, though you wouldn't be able to tell from looking at them. Their visual style shirks anything remotely approaching what one might consider to be stealthy, or even aerodynamic. But damn, they are cool as hell, insanely agile despite their size, and that wing swoop animation is amazing. They returned in the sequels as well, but by then they had been decorated by Max Haas, who made them look even better. The bright, vibrant colours over the top of their utilitarian grey paint, and this art seeming celebrated by the Resistance is so emblematic of what they stood for. Next up, in ninth place, we have a quintessential 80s aircraft from one of many TV shows around that time with some sort of super vehicle going on incredible missions and saving the day. It is of course Blue Thunder. Nah, I'm kidding, it's Airwolf! It had everything, the jet engines, the guns and rocket launchers, the turret that popped out of its belly, the blinky lights everywhere inside, and that killer theme music. And while still very close to the Bell 222 it's derived from, the appearance with its modifications was designed by Andrew Probert, who you may know as having designed the movie version of the Enterprise, as well as the Galaxy Class, and a whole host of other sci-fi staples. In 8th place is the bubble ship from Oblivion, and yes I know it technically breaks my rule about being able to fly in space, but it's still very much primarily an aircraft, and it's my list so I can do what I want. Bubbly Boy is here though because apart from being an absolutely gorgeous design, it's also got a lot of pretty practical elements. It carries a little foldable motorbike, it has straps for carrying larger payloads, it's got a fully traversable turret and can shoot behind itself, it's incredibly agile, and lastly the cockpit is a giant escape pod. And, out of everything on this list, this one is probably the most pleasant to scoot around in thanks to the amazing visibility. In another movie from the same director is my 7th place fave aircraft, the three-seater light fighter from Tron Legacy, and mainly because of its appearance. Everything in that movie is utterly fantastic looking, and this is no exception. The forward placed wings which fold up, that big wide V-tail, and it makes two trails! It's also very heavily armed, at least for something on the grid, but I'm not terribly sure how well it would have fared with its World War II dogfighting when put up against AMRAMs. Clue's plan to invade the real world was a little short-sighted there. There's also the single-seat light jets in the same film, and those are pretty cool, but the one from Tron Uprising is far better. We go back to video games for 6th place with the VSOL from Deus Ex Human Revolution. This thing is great with its rotating outboard jet nacelles and inverted VTEL, and the entirely enclosed cockpit completely sells the technology level of the setting at this time period, and the bright orange highlights here and there are also a nice touch. Sadly, while Mankind Divided had a higher tech and more streamlined version, it's not quite as good looking as the earlier incarnation. There was this slight shift in art direction between the two games, and in my opinion, the sequel lost a lot of the charm and Ghost in the Shell stylings that Human Revolution had. In fifth place is another modified version of a real-life aircraft from the first couple seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the CXD-23 Airborne Mobile Command Station, better known as the Bus. Before I talk about it though, does anyone remember that short-lived Knight Rider spin-off in the 90s that used a VTOL C5? I wonder if that thing was a source of inspiration, or if the similarities are just coincidental. As for the Bus, Coulson and his team used this heavily upgraded C-17 as a mobile base, and it carries almost everything they could ever need over two and a bit decks, and it felt pretty comfy. And yeah, the helicarriers are brilliant, but I like the bus. It has all these party tricks that we see over the course of the show, from the first being its VTOL capabilities, which also let it do this amazing in-flight stop and turn manoeuvre, pop out wing root mounted gun turrets, and docking clamps on top of the fuselage for other shield craft like the Quinjet or the very cool looking jump jet. It also ends up being equipped with a cloaking device. Sadly, it was destroyed in Season 2 and then replaced by Zephyr 1, which has its charms but the interior is just so lame. It's pretty much all dark and broody except for the cargo bay area, a big downgrade from the comfy places on the bus. It does look sweet when doing VTOL stuff though, especially in this scene where it breaks out from its hangar at the playground. 
Coming in at number 4 is the only one on this list that we've done a breakdown for, the SA2 Samson from Avatar because of how superbly utilitarian it is. And it has a V-tail. Everything about it feels so genuine and possible, it's a perfect near future imagining of what a medium or heavy lift rotorcraft might be. And the additions and modifications made for Pandoran service, such as the pressurised flight deck and vine strike kit, only add to that feeling of verisimilitude. Also, if you go beyond what is shown in the movie, the sheer detail that went into it and its sister craft of the Scorpion is astounding. You can really feel the passion the people behind the scenes had for the world building. Hopefully, the Samson's replacement in the sequel can live up to its legacy, though it seems a lot more heavily armed and more of a Scorpion Samson hybrid, but I don't think it'll be in the film all that much. In joint third place, because they're from the same game, is the Hunter Chopper and Combine Gunship from Half Life 2. The Hunter Chopper is utterly terrifying and it starts bullying you really before you get anywhere after starting. It's this huge nemesis for like the first quarter of the game and both times you fight it in the main games you don't really have the equipment to deal with it. Aesthetically speaking it's just this awesome blend of known human technology with the slightly weird combine materials and construction methods. It's a wonderful way for the game to get across that the combine are here to co-opt humanity and transform it for their own use. The gunship also shows this, but far more viscerally with its biomechanical form. What poor creature was this before the Combine found it? And like the Chopper, they are terrifying to fight, even though you have the tools to deal with them by the time they show up. They're just so accurate and agile, they really feel like an intelligent adversary, a living creature twisted by the Combine into a deadly killing machine. My second favourite aircraft is the newest one on this list, or oldest depending on how you look at it, because it is the Ornithopters from Dune, the most recent film version, the big buzzy dragonflies, not the David Lynch ones because those were kinda weird and goofy. The new Thopters are just such a fantastic take on an aircraft with flapping wings, which are often portrayed as something bird-like. Going the route of using insects as the basis of the technology is so refreshing, and they ended up being one of the most iconic things from the new adaptation. For example, War Thunder's April Fool's event this year was a sort of homage to the Dune strategy games, but the Thopter design was taken from the new movie. Before I go over my favourite aircraft, I have some honourable mentions here that didn't quite make it into the top 10. Firstly, I have to mention Ace Combat, but I haven't played any of the games, so I don't have much of an opinion here, though the Aegean is pretty cool, this enormous flying manta ray with its own remoras that keep it fueled. It's great! The idea that regular sized fuel craft can keep it topped up is hilarious though. Look at them, they're tiny! Secondly, there's the AAX Raven from Red Faction Guerrilla, which always looked very cool as they flew around shooting at me. I really wanted to fly one of these in the game, but sadly it was never possible. The other honourable mention goes to the various incarnations of the HK Aerial in the Terminator franchise. There's a lot of variations on the basic style of the craft, and I like pretty much all of them. The double jet nacelles, the weird underslung weapons, these to me were always far scarier than the other heavy equipment Skynet made use of, like those peculiar tanks things or the stupid mechs that some of the sequels had. And now we have the number one spot, my absolute favourite aircraft which goes to not one single vehicle but an entire classification of them, the hovercraft from the Matrix. I adore these, in all their various shapes and sizes. They're sort of sea creaturey shapes, all the little details on them, their age, their decay. If you've ever wondered where my love of visible antennas on craft comes from, it's here and their propulsion system. Even to this day, the hover pads remain pretty unique to the Matrix with their crackly buzzy noise, their big electrical arcs, and the subtle gas or plasma or whatever it is left in their wake. Absolutely fantastic, though they do look a bit peculiar on the bombers in the second renaissance. Besides their aesthetics, I also love how grounded they feel with how incredibly vulnerable they are. They do have a layered defence plan that starts with hiding and ends with the EMP, but every step on that plan they can still be utterly obliterated by sentinels, especially in the sequels. Speaking of sequels, I noticed that some of the new hovercraft are actually returning concepts from Reloaded and Revolutions, which is pretty neat, as is the amalgamation of hovercraft and sentient tech in the Manemesini. I do wish the new film had a little bit more real world stuff in it though, since I utterly adore the look of the world there, but what we got was pretty great. 
So that's my top 10 aircraft. Did you notice the theme that ran through most of them? Let me know in the comments, and please also tell me what your favourite aircraft is and why. Like and subscribe for more Space Dot content, and if you want to support us further, you can do so right here on YouTube by becoming a channel member or by giving us super thanks. You can also join our Patreon to have your name featured at the end of videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.